hey, you know, that ain't got nothing to do with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just living my life like it's golden, living my life like it's golden. But, you know, I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying, talk politics, but I love the president. You know what I'm saying? I love everybody. And at the end of the day, the day got to end. That's Big Glow right there. She was on CNN talking about her visit to the White House, and she said she ain't got nothing to do with all that. Listen, Big Glow can do no wrong with me. What type of answer did you expect from Glorilla? She come on there with her shades on. Clearly, she was high as a light bill out there. I thought she was blind for a second when she first came on, or maybe her pupils was dull. I didn't know what was going on. Hit you with some Jill Scott, living my life like it's golden. We all love that song. She had a little TikTok trend, if you know that. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know that Naya? You know that trend right there? Ah, that's my bestie. Listen, then she hit you with a motivational word at the end of the day, okay? Because at the end of the day, the day got to end. God, though, my, ain't that a good word? Yeah, Glow. Listen, man, the bird is chirping, and we're conversing. Welcome back to the Black Twitter Report. How art thou? How rude of me. I haven't even introduced myself. I'm the fly host. B dot, and I'm right here at the iHeart headquarters to host this week's episode of the Black Twitter Report. Well, why do they call you the fly host, B dot? Well, I'm glad you asked. See, I just flew here this morning. They'll tell you. I was in North Carolina at 6 a.m., and now I'm in New York, and I will be flying right back to North Carolina when I'm done because I got to get my daughter Ryan from school by 4.15, and that car rider line is hectic if you know anything about that. Number two, why do they call me the fly host? <laughs> you see the drip? <laughs> they got to put these wet floor signs down when I come through these iHeart headquarters. You dig them? I don't even have any socks on. And you know when a man walks around with some shoes with no socks on, he fly. Ain't nobody more fly than me. You dig? But I'm not alone. Oh, no. I've got the entire Black Twitter crew right here with me. Black Twitter crew, make some noise, please. Woo! I didn't hear you make any noise. I saw you clap your hands, but you didn't make any noise. One more time. Make some noise, Black Twitter crew. Woo! There we go. There we go. Listen, man, we're about to spotlight and break down all the news, jokes, drama, and controversy happening on Black Twitter over the last week. So make sure you tap in the chat. I'm over here. Let's see. We over here in the chat. Uh, they said I'm giving Nigerian scammer vibes. I'll take that. I'll take Nigerian scammer vibes. I love the jokes. Bring them on. Join the conversation. But in the words of the great orator, J. Jeezy Jenkins, let's get it. Now, I'm not sure if y'all know. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, no. Breaking news. BTR breaking news. They're calling him Cuff Daddy. Listen, <laughs> P. Diddy had his houses in Miami and Los Angeles raided last night. And I know you know about it by now. Black Twitter went crazy. This has been a horrific 2024 for Diddy. It started off with Cassie dragging him for what? How much money is she hitting for now? Was it 300 million? Uh, uh, but it, it, was a, it was a bunch of millions of dollars. It was a bunch of millions of dollars. And now they don't know where Diddy is. They said he was on, folks was tracking him like he was Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. Just look, I think he's in the Netherlands. I think, he, I don't know. Let's get to some of Black Twitter and see what they were talking about, Cuff Daddy. Take that, take that. <laughs> Uh, Yams Casino said Diddy gonna bring out his own handcuffs when they arrest him. <laughs> now, I believe that. Y'all think Diddy got leather on his handcuffs or fur? What y'all think? I think fur. Like that. I think fur too. Definitely some fur on them handcuffs. Uh, the feds, when they went to arrest Diddy and his kids were home, this is I make my own shit. What they say? Like I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> okay. I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> that right there is Denzel telling you right. I call him Denzel. Denzel. I, hey, I'm leaving here with something. I'm going to leave here with some, 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 some warrants or some bags or some kids. They put the kids in handcuffs and everything out there. It was horrible. Look at this. At Ugly New York said it. When you're trying to distract Homeland Security. Give me that. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is him dancing for his freedom. Hilarious. But anytime you put that audio beside a dancing video, like, because personally, I can't dance at all. Like, I, I hate that about it. I have no rhythm. It's horrible. So people love to get videos of me dancing and putting that stupid audio. And it makes it, most of the time, it go viral. Uh, Kitronada, is that, is that how you say that? We're going to go with Kitronada, everybody? Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, to have Homeland Security involved is crazy. This, <laughs> that is way past the cousins at the Pentagon jurisdiction. Now, now you're like this one. Now you like this one. Because Homeland Security is something serious you got to did it. We paying tax dollars for y'all to go up in there and see what kind of porn did he got in his house. We don't need that. No, we don't need that. My tax dollars could be paying for something totally different. This was my favorite one. 
This was my favorite one, all right? Uh, me alone in my mind, I pray for you, said, uh, Tupac coming out of hiding as a surprise witness in Diddy in court. <laughs> What's up, y'all? <laughs> you know what time it is? It's about to be that. What's up, y'all? <laughs> you no, know what time it is? Now, it's about to we be treat, that. We treat Tupac like Elvis. But if Tupac is alive, and he's just been waiting for Diddy to get him done so he can pop out in court, that is a great time to pop back up. We thought he killed you. Nope, I'm about to put the sick, the nail right in the damn coffin. Let's see, Suave Bra said uh, T.D. Jakes trying to slide under the bed when Diddy Crib was getting raided. Please hit that one, Dylan. <laughs> First of all, why does he look like T.D. Jakes? Amanda loved that one. That was her favorite one, because he looked just like T.D. Jakes. And why is he so talented moving backwards like that? It didn't look like he was trying to skadoot, skadoot up under the bed. And how his hat didn't fall off? He got one of them Cam Newton hats. That hat that just don't, that just don't fall off. I'm telling you, it's got to be. Oh, my manager liked this one the most. KF Chester. Chester, you might want to think about changing that name. That's not really cool in black community. But nevertheless, meet Mill right now while the FBI takes away Diddy. Hit it, Dylan. Free my muddies out of the pound. Free you, my heart. Free you, my heart. Free, Free you, my heart. My heart. Now... We Free you, my heart. I'm going to give you one and two. How do you throw up the heart sign? Okay, I do this. That, that's me. That's one. We're going to say this is one. If you're in the chat right now, put one. This is one. Now, Naya, Naya and, and the kids, they do this. Is that it, is that it Naya? Am I close? That's, not really. Well, damn it. This is the best I can do. Now, you do one or two. Let me. No, we talk. The third. You got to do the little. There's a third? Yeah. What is that? Slot over here, Naya. We can sit. Slot over here, please. Real quick. Real quick. What? Oh, the chat. One. I see a lot of twos. I'm one. See? One. 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 What is that? Japan. This This is what my... They do this. It's a little... John is saying in Japan, they do... What are y'all doing? Are y'all trying to snap? It's a little hard. Yeah, it's a mini... This is a little hard. I think John's making this up. He says that right here, this is what they do in Japan. And Naya confirmed it. And the... Behind the camera, he's doing, I think he's just throwing up his set. I think he's just set banging. He's up here doing this. I'm in New York. I don't know what the hell's going on, folks. I'm just going to keep moving. Um, up next. Oh, let me go to the chat. Let me go to the chat. Y'all talking, okay? <laughs> Wait a minute. What, what in the Ray Carruth? <laughs> they found Ray Carruth in the trunk in Tennessee. Do you remember that? I remember, I'm from North Carolina. They found that man in the trunk in Tennessee. Whole another episode. Uh, let's see. Two is for the kids born after 97. I agree. And yes, this is a Gen Z heart. This, this, this thing. I don't even know how y'all creatively, and they throw it up so effortless. I don't know how, this right here makes much more sense. Look at the, look at the love in that heart, Naya. Naya, look at the love in that heart. Diddy in the trunk in the islands. No doubt, who said that? Uh, T, T, somebody said that on the chat. Go read, the last name is Jamaica. Y'all was named, can we discuss that real quick? These names are difficult. And I be wanting to give y'all shout outs, but y'all got too many, too many syllables and too many consonants and not enough vowels. I don't know. Amir Copper's just laughing. I don't know what they're laughing at. You need some shape ups. No, I think I'm straight. <laughs> I thought I was. All right, here we go. Young Miami even came out. I don't know if y'all saw it, but Young Miami was out there in these black to the streets. My young man said, it's going to be a fun summer. I don't know if she didn't get the memo that her, her dude was getting raided at the moment, but uh, she was definitely talking about summertime. And then Beyonce hit her and said, um, that's me with my man about to go to jail. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got to be free, baby. You ain't got to worry about that no more. Uh, what that mean? Hashtag CFWU. Naya? Let's see. Uh, what that, what that hashtag CF? Anybody in the room smarter than me that can tell me what that means? Oh, we don't know the acronyms? I don't know. Cracking... Let's, just, let's try to figure this out. Let's use our can't, context can't clues. Fuck with you? Can't fuck with you. Ooh, oh, that might can't be it. Can't fuck with us. Can't fuck with us. Yeah. That's a good thing. Some Boom. smart people in this yeah. room. And then you got, oh, wait, and then you got a uh, young man. And then the response was from HH Backup One. She just by herself, I guess. I guess that's what she's meaning. She, they, 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 this is the real one, baby. I'm telling you. Ain't that Stacey Dash? Yeah. That's the that's the that's the fine Stacey Dash show. That's when we all used to lust for Stacey Dash. Like black Stacey Dash. That's the black Stacey Dash. You said something right there. Now you said something right there. You said something right there. Listen, I'm not sure. Hold on, let me check one more time over it. The black Stacey Dash. Yeah, they loving that. Yeah. That's this is T T Lou one. You're saying can you just change your name just for the today? Just just for today so I can just read it. Nevertheless. 
We're getting a new Beyonce album this Friday. If you're happy about it, make some noise. As you see, the anticipation has been building since the Queen upstaged the entire Super Bowl when she announced it last month. Do y'all remember that commercial? Like, she literally almost broke the internet with that. Now, Act 2 is titled Cowboy Carter, and it's set to dominate country music. Last week, the last appetizer before the entree was served as Queen B dropped the album cover, along with a note about her motivation for reclaiming country music. Now, in her proclamation, Beyonce details not feeling welcome or accepted when she performed at the Country Music Awards five years ago. Now, Naya, she's a huge fan of Beyonce. She says she remembers that. They treated her some, the translation all that is, them white folks was fucking racist at them Country Music Awards. That's what happened. So after that experience, she did a deep dive into the history of country music. And of course, like many, many things, Black people were the originators of country music. Did you know that? Yeah, like it goes all the way back to the, to the tribal music. It goes up to the, to, the, to the music of just, of strength. Just that good old soul Christian gospel music. Wade in the water music. You know what I'm saying? Then it goes up to jazz and minstrel show music. And boom, and then we get to country music. Black folks started that. So Miss Carter is now out to take back what's ours. And... The entire beehive is in formation, ready for battle to support to support Cowboy Carter. But first line of defense starts with Black Twitter, always. and you know that always. So we're gonna be petty. Can we do that? Yes, Can we be know. petty? Up first, we're gonna show you the artwork just in case you missed it. Now it's Act Two, Cowboy Carter, three twenty nine. Now, I just looked at this and I said, wow, Beyonce falling off a horse. But oh, one of the producers, Amanda, says, no, no, no. See, you're not looking. See, you're looking with these eyes. But you got to open up that eye, my boy. I said, well, what's that eye, my boy? She said, look at it. Huh? And Beyonce looking away. See, the horse of slavery is moving forward. But Beyonce says, no, no, no. We're looking in the other direction. Sort of like Abraham Lincoln on that penny. You know what I'm saying? Sort of like. Oh, see, look. See, people on here talking about take it back. Yep. It's always best good. So always be gracious, best revenge is your paper. That's right, A. Rogers 1070 said, get that bread. I'm with you on that. Get that bread. Now, you also see in this picture the flag. Amanda brought up a good point. You see no stars. You just see a glimpse of it, then it's shaded. Maybe she's being shady to the flag. Is that what you're uh, leaving, Amanda? Yes. See, she's, she's petty. She's being petty. That's why we're being petty. petty. Uh, oh, Bay Petty. I said be petty. I guess that was wrong. Might as well lit it on fire. Uh, uh, ooh, if she would have lit that on fire, they'd have kicked out of America. Now, <laughs> somebody asked Beyonce, okay? Dom Dottie said, where were you on January 6th, Beyonce? <laughs> And then Willful Chaos said she led the charge, I fear. <laughs> now this, I saw this and I said, are they trying to say that Beyonce led the insurrection? <laughs> Ain't no way in the hell Beyonce would do that. Beyonce was in Houston during the insurrection. They showed video of her. She was just watching like the rest of us. But then Naya said, no, stupid. Again, you looking with these eyes. You got to open up. No. I said, well, what's on this eye right here? Now she said, listen, man, right now, country music is synonymous with insurrectionists. Like, when you see country music, you automatically think, oh, they're going to the Capitol. And Beyonce says, no. <laughs> Much like the Capitol that was made and built by black folk, so was this music. So I'm on the front lines to change the narrative. <laughs> Somebody come on with me now. <laughs> Changing the narrative of what's being put out there. Take my time, Pastor. Can't do that. We've got a 30-minute show here, Jen. All right. Up next, Mr. Flyguy says, oh, wait, don't get it. Beyonce leaving the CMAs in 2016 to go record this album. Hit it, Dylan. Because I don't. Don't. Huh. <laughs> Who's gonna check me, boo? And what's she gonna do? Drop an album that everybody gonna buy as soon as it drops on Friday. Do you think it's gonna be one of her biggest albums? I definitely do. Really? I think it's so crossover and it's getting so much conversation about it that people that wouldn't normally buy a Beyonce album are gonna buy it just to hear what it sounds like. Because she said this ain't no country album. It's a what album? A Beyonce album. Talk your talk, sis. Oh, now this right here. At underscore Camaro underscore said, Beyonce just said, Dylan. Oh. Bitch, put your boots on. <laughs> Bitch, put your boots on. Bitch, put your boots on. It's simple. Bitch, put your boots on. Huh? What color are your boots, Nari? Pink. Pink boots right there. Jay, what color are your boots? Yellow. Yellow boots for Jay. Uh, Dylan, what color are your boots? Black. Black boots. See, that's a man after my own heart. Tiff, what color are your boots? Blue. Blue boots right there. Amanda, what color are your boots? I got white. She got white boots. Okay, see? She's not racist. <laughs> New guy. Mark. White. W white boots right there. That's not shocking at all with the new guy. Black. Black boots over there, see? I'm 
Brown boots. Brown boots. I like the way you played in the middle right there. Color your boots. Red. Red. You had all that time to think, and you still had to go like you was at the McDonald's drive-thru. Let me get a... Abby, what color are your boots? Brown. Brown boots right there. I'm going to do a brown and black boot that I found at Taft. That was a really... Never mind. All right, we're going to keep it moving. Um, oh, all right. We're grading me on this, y'all. Okay? This is uh, at fucking Lisa. <clears throat> Who died in a 12 lane, cowboy caca? Mm. <laughs> no, sir. Y'all tell me, y'all give me, what, what, oh, hold on, what, hold on, let me look up in the chest, see what color they boots are. They got blue boots on, uh, a mere, a mere copper got butters on. Of course y'all do, this is New York. Of course, everybody over here got some damn yellow boots and Tim's on over here. Y'all, boy, y'all, uh, let's see. New New Ish says, old Jamaican Drake was better. <clears throat> Ja, no star. I'm not getting any love for that. Tiffany, I'm starting to think that's you. Pig whispers, gator boots. Okay. Some, why didn't anybody have the boots with the fur, with uh, the bird? Somebody should have had that. Okay, one more time. Who died in a 12 lane? Cowboy Kata? All right, fine. Moving on. Uh, at the Titan, Batty says, these are the unemployed horses at the Beyonce auditions for Act 3. <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious because horses is out here trying to get a coin. You hear me? What? They see all this? Look, right here. All right, so... I'll give you some education on that. This is its cousin. He said Beyonce got Renee out here picking up gigs just to survive. <laughs> now, if you don't know, if you were like me and didn't go to the Renaissance tour, she has a crystal horse that's at the uh, Renaissance tour named Renee. Is that correct? Uh, okay. And Amanda, she was the all-knowing Beyonce. So if I say anything wrong, you she's something to confirm off screen to correct me. But nevertheless, so Renee has been sent to the shed. And for this new horse, do we have a name for the new horse? It is. What is the new horse? Chardonnay. Chardonnay. So we have Renee and Chardonnay. And I think you're going to say Renee and Chardonnay. I don't know why that sounds sound like a sheep a little bit. I was trying to do a horse sound. You saw where I was going. Didn't quite get there. Yeah, keeping it moving. Oh, and. Oh, man, but you didn't know the name of the new horse? Oh, look, and she's talking shit, she's giving a much attitude. I don't think that's been established. <laughs> uh, Renee, after seeing Beyonce's new horse on the Cowboy Carter album cover. Look at Renee. Huh? Just out here looking for some crap. Just either to sell it or smoke it. Poor Renee. All right. <laughs> Listen, if there's one... Th Wait, before I go here, let me look over here to the chat again. They said they can give that horse a new job at the fair. The Beyonce horse coming to a city near you. Now, that would work. You tell somebody you got a Beyonce horse out there at the fair. That's some top billing right there. Woo, that's some top dollars right there. She probably got it on retainer two years after use, probably. Everybody up here, too. Two to the max, Butters, Tims. Um, Amir Cooper saying a true icon to Beyonce. Well, of course, we all love Beyonce. And, of course, there's one thing about black Twitter we love. That is, if you put your business out there, get ready to be clowned. And that's deservingly or not. Like, even exciting news is, is food for black Twitter to just, just drag you all through them social media streets. You dig what I'm saying? Black Twitter at JX14 posted, happy news. Happy news. I mean, we were all supposed to celebrate. It was her boo thing, giving her a promise ring. And, and although she did get plenty of congratulations, Black Twitter also made sure that they got them jokes in as well. Fucking haters. But let's read some of them. <laughs> All right. So this this is what she posted. My boo got me a promise ring. And as soon as I saw it, I said, what the fuck did he promise? <laughs> to do the bare minimum? I just, like, what did he promise? <laughs> what did he promise? promise did, did, did you promise then to leave? I didn't know what was going on. So, of course, black Twitter, thinking much like me, jumped on it. And the first question, where is it? Where is it at? I'm a, where, you got to go cross-eyed down there to look at that ring. You got to, uh, uh, uh. Did he promise to give you a magnifying glass with that moment? was a question. <laughs> look, Sun Goddess Chell said, that ain't a toe ring? <laughs> and that's real, a pinky toe ring. <laughs> Oh, is this where he got it? Who said that? Uh, it, it is, I don't even see the name on that right there. At Fuzon Droid. At Fuzon Droid. Fuzon Droid says, um, is this where he got it? Uh, probably. I remember those. I used to love those. Oh, man, Mama, can I please get 25 cents? Please. Won't be nothing in there but a piece of little jewelry that just get bent up for you. Get it to the daggone house. Let me go over here to the chat. Hold on. What y'all talking about? Let's see. That's what, that's what Amir Copper said. That's what I keep my keys on. Facts. <laughs> 
Hey, you better tell them the diamonds in my chain are uh, individually bigger. We can see them right now. Y'all better, y'all better talk about me. <laughs> I told y'all I ain't wearing no socks today. <laughs> I told y'all these some tuxedo pants and shoes. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, promise rings as adults is insane. That's a good conversation. Hold on, Jim and I came. Good question. I want to ask the room. Are we still doing promise rings, ladies? Are you accepting of a promise ring, Naya? No. Nah. Posting my big age. I'm just asking. Her big age posted it. She was super excited. How big? Naya that said it. Her big age, no. <laughs> Tiff, Amanda. It has to have investment potential. <laughs> Tiffany says it has to have investment material uh, potential. You gotta be able to insure. Abby, no, no promise you. ring. You gotta be able to insure it. Take your money. You have to be able to insure the promise. Okay, so wait, so so a promise ring is fine if you can get it insured. Insured, that means no. big enough. No, wait, see, Naya saying she don't want a promise at all. The promise should be the engagement ring. Are you Tiffany Evans? The song Promise Ring? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who the hell Tiffany Evans is. <laughs> Wait a minute, but what if he's promising to be your man? Naya, that's not good enough? Okay, I guess not. Promise rings are for teens. That's just a damn engagement ring, JS3. That's what Amir, uh, Amir Copper says. Um, producer Chick says, no way, no way. Promise rings are for teens. I don't know. She's right? Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Fellas, you hear that? They don't want no damn promise ring. The promise is better you're going you're engaged. Well, you didn't have to give her anything. Right. It looks stressful. He should have kept it. <laughs> he should have kept it. Honestly, if that is what he was going to give Jay, he probably should have kept that shit to himself. Uh, at Sexy Bruja, the plug says, that's a lie ring. That ain't no damn promise ring. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that. Just one simple word. That's a lie ring. I'm with it. Uh, at uh, Ni Ni Simone, Sim I, I love a girl. She said, baby, that's an earring and a key holder. And I promise that's exactly what it looked like. I promise. She had, she had some nails on her fingernails, some, some little rhinestones on her fingernails. If you zoom in on it, that was bigger than that damn diamond. That was terrible. Listen, as we just saw, seeking out relationship advice from black Twitter, crazy. And going to black Twitter for advice and or reassurance, <laughs> even crazier, right? Like that lesson was learned in the hardest way possible. When that Jamie Melvin, you got a four for the A. Jamie Melvin not only fucked up by cheating on his girl, bad job, Jamie Melvin, but bro also fucked up again by asking the bird what her reaction meant when he told her. <laughs> damn, like, I want to feel bad for dude, but not really, because he did it to him damn self. Let's go to it real quick. Let's see it. Smirk. These got drugged through these social media streets. Now, Jamie Melvin said, told her I cheated, she smirked and kept doing her makeup. What'd that mean? Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, chat, what'd that mean, chat? Chat, what'd that mean? You tell your girl, baby, I've been cheating. And she say, <laughs> what'd that mean? <laughs> Black Twitter told us what it means. Let's see what they said. Uh, Adele Hyde underscore all said, she knew. And she's been slowly poisoning you for two weeks. Yeah, that smirk was, nigga, why you ain't dead yet? Like, <laughs> I've been putting uh, uh, car fluid in your damn grits. I don't know what you over there doing. Uh, Mr. VVS underscore. And them diamonds better be real, too, with a Twitter name like that. Say you're about to lose 30 pounds in a month. Absolutely. Definitely put a root on you. A root. Yeah, she might be, especially for New Orleans or something. She know that, that little woo. Witchcraft shit? Well, I'm telling you, you're gonna just go pee and it's gonna fall off right in the toilet. Bloop. Over for you. Over for you. Uh, Creme de la underscore C says, You're the cheat E. She's the cheater. Ooh. Damn. Ooh. Just, <laughs> Jay, you sound like my 12 year old. That's her thing, right? Because <laughs> there's nothing else to be said. Guess you know your place. Now go in there and get in a fetal position and cry for the rest of the night. Pump. Uh, at Robert JLC says, Means you're late to the game. She's been cheating for a while with your best friend, his brother, the bartender, and the guy she met at the gas station. And she's doing her makeup to go meet with one of them right now. God, dog. I know that's dog. right. I know that's right, too, sis. <laughs> I know that's right, too. But this right here, man. Ain't this women? This women. She ten what was her name? Uh, Artley. Yeah, you see the name right there. Uh, she is 10 steps ahead of you. Aren't women always? Especially when they bite their little finger like this right here and dad gonna got their little edges down like that on the side. 
Yeah, I'm talking about you, Naya. <laughs> Naya look just like this. Y'all can't see, but Naya look just like this. I'm telling y'all, this is Naya. She just did like an AI thing to the face to just, just, I don't know what's going on. All right, Young uh, Re 81. Young Re 81, who um, bought his blue check, said, intermittent fasting. <laughs> I just had to throw that out there because they took my blue check and I earned my damn blue check. Now y'all trying to make me pay for it. The devil is a lie. Intermittent fasting is normally hard, but you're going to be just fine. Thoughts and prayers. Now, I had to get educated. I was like, educate me on intermittent. So then, all knowing now, your child come in and say, well, listen, see, intermittent fasting, when you go for it all day without eating it, oh, so buddy about to just be sick. Yes, in that fetal position I was just telling you about, sick as hell at the crib. What y'all saying? Amir Copper screaming, Naya! I don't know why she's doing that, but maybe that's your people. Uh, Nunu Ish says, back to the streets. Uh, my boy Jay, TRJWS says, it's been O-V-A-H, over. I'm, now that's a fact, when she smirked and get back to, she didn't even, she didn't even like argue. She didn't have an upset face about it. She didn't say, how dare you? How could you? Nothing. She dismissed it. You are dead, brother. God. That's just, um, we back to the engagement ring. All right, let's see. Where we at? Oh, one of my favorites. Uh, at Anubisra says, the war is already over, bro. <laughs> Play it, Dylan. <laughs> 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 now, what's super funny about this, and I'm glad you told me, like, of course, when you watch this video, it don't matter if you're black or white. Do you know that song, Naya? Of course I do. I was just asking. I don't know, you a baby, you know. But in the video, he putting the gun down like, no, 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 it don't matter if you're black or white. Well, this brother's picked the gun up because he's about to get shot right in the face. <laughs> I love it. Now, listen, it's been a while since we had a good rap beef, okay? And listen, take the gloves off and let's just get nasty with the rap beef. Like, the last one was a Drake and, Drake and Pusha T, maybe? No. No? We have one more recent than that? Yeah, Nikki well, and Meg. Nice. Nikki and who? Meg. Nikki and Meg. Oh, Nikki and Meg the Stallion. That was like a couple. Was her mind on Instagram? Yeah, matter of fact, we talked about that on the Black Twitter Report a couple episodes ago. Go back and check that out if you missed it. We deb I, I forgot about that. Now, wh which side were you on, Naya, in the Nikki and Meg beef? Uh, hold on. Now huh? it's a bar. Oh, she's a barb? Period. Well, wait a minute. I'm talking about, like, we can be barbs but still be sensual. Like, she, yeah. you're a barb that's just not, like, all the way to the deep end barb. Like, like you don't. She's a are you a barb with some sense? Twitter bar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Nazmaraj. You're a Nazmaraj. You're a Nazmaraj? <laughs> what? Is that a thing? I don't even know these, the terminology they're using with Nikki. So I'm guessing you were Team Nikki on that. I don't know. I thought maybe you came through with some touch bars. <laughs> Nevertheless. I'm talking about beef, though. Like, like not West Coast, East Coast beef where people die. I don't, of course we don't want that. But I'm talking about just beef, like the type of beef where you hope that low-key all the parties involved are at the BET Awards at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, shit's about to go down, like on stage, backstage, on the way to the party, on the way after the after party. I just want to see the smoke. And last week, Kendrick Lamar jumped on Future and Metro Boomin' song. It's called Like That. And he took shots at Drake. And North Carolina's own, J. Cole. Dilla, can you give us a little bit of that? Get it up, it's time for him to prove that he's a problem. Niggas clicking up, but turn out be legit, no 40 water, tell him. Aww. Yeah, yeah, get up with me, fuck sneak this. And first person shooter, I hope they came with three switches. I crash out like fuck rap, this Melly Mel if I had to. Got two T's with me, I'm snatching chains and burning tattoos. It's up, lost too many soldiers not to play it safe. If he walk around with that stick, it ain't Andre 3K. Think I won't drop the location, I still got PTSD. Motherfuck the big three, nigga, it's just big me, nigga. Ooh. Boom, what? I'm really like that. And your best work is a light pack, nigga. Prince outlive my I, 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 I miss Kendrick's voice. If I can say that. I miss Kendrick's voice. Like, I haven't heard him in a while rapping to a tune that I actually like. Like, I've been off the last couple Kendrick albums. But Naya, she was over here dancing. She's over here. And they showing you love on here, too, Naya. Say her edges are laid, can confirm. That's I heart. I heart is in just bragging about Naya, child, man. Then they talking about uh, Meg 8. Sorry, Naya. That's what um, Amir Copper said. Okay, so take that. Need to be damn sure it is right. And they said not the BET, but the Source Awards. Listen, we only had a, we need to bring them back. Bring back the Source Awards. Everybody was doing ass whooping at the Source Awards. <laughs> I loved it. You knew that somebody was gonna get stomped out at the Source Awards. Please bring back the Source Awards. We need that. But nevertheless, 
AK Doc. Can we talk about this a little bit? Can we talk about Black Twitter? Uh, let's see. David DTSS says, Future rapping about Drake is the first time he's ever sounded truly heartbroken. <laughs> and that's real, because you know Future don't give a damn about no woman. But you tell him he can't rap with his homeboy no more, he's going to cry like a baby in the songs. I believe it. Uh, right here, Cold World, J. Coleville said, Motherfuck the big three, nigga. It's just big me. Woo. I ain't gonna hold you. That's the Kendrick Lamar line. I don't like that. That was a tough bar. I like that. And that right there, to everybody saying, is it for real? Is it? That was a direct shot because they always call themselves the big three. So him saying that, everything else, I'm sort of like, eh, you could have took that anywhere. But uh, Earring Dealer One says, he said, I don't know. Them, I don't know them big lottos. I'm weak. <laughs> now, I was confused on that. Like, big lottos? But then you're talking about, remember Mulatto? Had to change her name to Big Lotto. You really just call them beige. Y'all are really turning this into a, <laughs> y'all turn into a, a, a light-skinned, dark-skinned thing. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, it's right here. Man, fuck those light-skinned niggas. Kendrick. <laughs> Is that what he said? Is that how y'all taking that? Are we really taking this as a dark skin, light skin thing? No, man. See, that's Willie Lynch. That is Willie Lynch. That didn't put Willie Lynch in rap. And I don't like that. Listen, I have a podcast for those. Why is he talking about so much history stuff? I have a podcast right here on iHeart. So I didn't know. Maybe you didn't either. And I find different black facts and I share them. And Willie Lynch was something that I had to learn about. Okay. And if you don't know about Willie Lynch, it's simple. If you were the if you were darker than a uh, paper bag, you had to take your ass out to the field. He was a house nigga. And, oh no, he was a field nigga. I'm sorry. House niggas went into the house. They were light in a plastic bag. That's Willie Lynch, and it's a divide in light skin and dark skin. And they're bringing it right here to rap. And I'm enjoying it a little bit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Eric Trillman said. Eric Trillman underscore says all these rap niggas beefing while thugs stuck off. <laughs> stuck off world like Hulk door to, <laughs> like Hulk door to Civil War. <laughs> Yo, that is real. But, oh, you know what I thought about with this? Just going back to the top of the show, we don't know what's going to happen with Diddy, but I know the feds are coming to get him. If he did, the prison party would be lit with him, R. Kelly, Young Thug. That concert would be off the chains. Not the prison white party. I'm telling you, man. That would travel. Tell me you wouldn't go to that joint. That would sell tickets. You couldn't actually come into prison. You would see it on like a board. I haven't worked out all the logistics. Nevertheless, um, at 312 Darius says, we're getting a hip-hop civil war. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Everybody happy about it. Because I ain't going to hold you now. They are the big three to me. And I think, lyrical-wise, I would put Big Sean in that. Like, I love Big Sean. Like, Big Sean, what the hell are you turning your nose up to, Naya? Big Sean is lyrical as hell. You don't like Big Sean, Naya? No, no. She just said she don't like Big Sean, Detroit. She just said that. Don't do that. Don't do that. You don't think Big Sean is lyrical with Drake and Kendrick and, and Cole? I love Kendrick. I love Kendrick. I love Big Sean. I really do love Kendrick. You do. However. However, comma. Big three is generous. Oh. Big three is generous. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's giving him a lot. It's giving Big Sean a lot, adding him to Big Three. Yeah. What y'all think, chat? Oh, A Rogers 10 Savage. I'm turning my nose up too. I agree with Naya. Big Sean. See, with, with, with all them question marks and exclamation points, that let me know you ain't listening to Big Sean enough. Big Sean is super lyrical. Nevertheless, I have been waiting for this beef and I am waiting for the Civil War. Big Sean is not up there. Let's relax. ESQ 1154. Nah. They said they need a Naya cam. I, hey, I ain't gonna hold you. I tried to get over here a second ago. She don't like to be all in the front like that. We're gonna, we gonna break it up. I'm wearing you down, baby, like Steve Urkel used to do Laura. Wow. Get the shot high. Wow. See? Shot yes, high. he is up there. Big Sean is in top five. Ooh. Come on, now don't be silly. Now don't be disrespectful. We're about to just throw away the rest of the show and just talk about how stupid y'all okay, sounds well, over here. Push your teeth. Right. Like, 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 push your teeth should be. Like, that's a real conversation yeah. to be had. Big yeah. Sean. I do love me some and see, like, I'm just not a Pusha T fan. Not disrespecting Pusha T. I know he's a lyrical beast, but I'm just not a fan of him. I'm a fan of Sean in addition to he's a lyrical beast. Like, I'm a fan of 2 Chains, but I wouldn't put him in this conversation. Okay. You dig what I'm saying? But nevertheless, okay. Is, is Jay-Z never in top three? Jay-Z is, Jay -Z is Mount Rushmore. Out? No. Oh. Jay-Z is Mount Rushmore can't be touched. <laughs> okay. Jay-Z okay. Jay will never oh, age okay, out. Okay. Amanda, do you agree with this conversation down here? I agree, but I don't agree. Big Sean. You don't agree with Big Sean either? <laughs> Hands raised if anybody agrees with me and Big Sean. Just me and Jay. One person. Just me. He knows how to make money. 
He's behind the scenes producing everything. But you talking about, but it's, but it's bars? Y'all saying his bars are weak? Like, what are y'all saying? His bars are not weak. No, what are y'all saying then? I'm saying, however, Dr. Seuss. Generosity. Did you say Big Sean's bars or Dr. Dr. Seuss? At best. Kick her out the room. Oh, next case. All right, moving on. All right, sorry. All right. Uh, I have a question for you. Yes. Because you came in with your Greenville shirt. So how do you feel about this being a North Carolina and Jay Cole? I don't think any of them want no smoke with Cole. Okay. Dre, Kendrick, Sean, 2 Chains. Jay-Z, none of them want no smoke with Cole. Cole is not only witty, but he's super, super lyrical. I agree. And Cole don't bother a damn person. <laughs> Cole be riding around Durham, North Carolina on a damn bike with his hair dressed up going to Walmart. Minding his business. Cole don't bother no damn body. So for Kendrick to come out his side of his mouth with this foolish right here, I hope Dreamville, Dreamville Fest is coming up in a couple weeks. And I hope J. Cole come out there and rip him a new one. I'm talking about do a whole set. To Kendrick, and I'm gonna go live and just add you to the live, Naya, so you can see the annihilation. <laughs> so you can see it. Naya thinks Nikki tops this five, though. So said two chains. No, I didn't say two chains. See, now y'all misrepresent me. Did you say Nikki top two? No, I'm not. Oh, is she on your Mount Rushmore? So y'all let that ride, but I can't say Big Sean should be in the top three. Okay, we're gonna move on. Uh, we should let this man host. Let me have my corner. <laughs> my fault. Okay. Uh, what's this? Uh, at Nigelos? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Kendrick calling you a bad built Dr. Miami doll and a bomb Drake. <laughs> 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 oh my God. All right. Back to the chat. A Rod is clearly does not agree with me. Two chains. This isn't making any sense. Um, Amir Copper. I think it was really for Drake light skin ass. The this was so 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 cautions. But if he say. Fuck the big three, it's just big me. Like, I would take offense to that if I was part of the big three, right? Mm -hmm. I would think so. Um, what's this, Cole 1985 took a body? Funny, funny underscore shoe set up? What's she meaning? What's she saying? What's she saying to me? She took a body? What are you talking about? What are you saying? All right, I'm What did he say? Oh, in the 1985 song, he, he demolished Lil Xan and them. I didn't catch that one. Uh, that's the name of the song, because that one he was born. Naya the Interpreter. Yes, she is. Definitely need her. Listen, we need interpreters out here. And we need somebody out there checking on these aunties and uncles. Hell, maybe even me. Because a lot of folks walking around feeling a bit of paranoia and shame this week after Hulu released that documentary about what? Freaknik. Yeah, the annual Spring Break Festival in Atlanta during the 80s and the 90s. See, if you're not sure, if you're not educated on it, um, this is an HBCU event. It began in 1983 as just a small picnic in a public park. It grew to a party that took over the entire city of Atlanta. Quick quiz. Name those three HBCUs in Atlanta. Spelman, Morehouse, Clark. and Clark. Clark. Clark Atlanta. There we go. There we go. Good job, Naya. Naya was on it right there. Big shot tonight. Did you go to HBCU? No, I did not. Where'd you go? I went to a university in Chicago called DePaul University, but I did pledge a black sorority. So okay. You know, what sorority did you pledge? I forgot that. Of course. Okay, AKA. Listen, listen. I don't play with that. I don't just assume anymore. Quick story. One time I took AKA balloons to a Delta probate. Ooh. Yes, I'm talking about 19 of the biggest balloons you could ever freaking find. My homegirl, she was pledged and she was online. I didn't know what for. She was very fair skinned. She was light skinned. So I automatically assumed it was AKA. See how ignorant that is? I automatically assumed it was AKA. I popped up with 19 of the biggest balloons. And, the, and one of the reds came over to me as I was walking up. She's like, if you don't get them balloons, the fuck out of here. And I looked up and read the room and just, whew. Let all them bitches go. I'm talking about, I've never felt so small in my life. So I will never just assume. So big shout to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah big shout to you. All right, so with that being said, um, Freaknik, do we have a trailer for that, Dylan? I'm sorry, I went on a tangent. All right, can we please play that for the people? Every generation has a moment where they come just to have some fun. Atlanta is the mecca for black people in America. It has multiple historically black colleges. In the 80s, we said, let's plan a picnic during spring break. Let's call it Freaknik. Freaknik was the greatest black gathering in America. It was like an entry point into the black cultural experience. To be able to be in the middle of the street, dancing, laughing, playing your music, it's a moment.
Now listen, when I'm in the airport in a few hours, I'm gonna check out Freaknik. I wanna see it. But y'all know niggas can't have nice things. <laughs> and as the trailer shows, eventually Freaknik got to be so out of control that they had to shut the whole damn thing down. Now that Hulu has released this movie, Black Twitter has been locked in, hoping that they don't catch somebody that they know featured in the project. I remember one time a we took a church trip down to Atlanta during Freaknik. Didn't it? We children didn't know it was Freaknik. But them pastors knew. Before I get into that, let me get off here real quick. They did know, Naya. They had us down there at Freaknik in Atlanta on a church, on a young, on a young men's retreat. It's like the Listen, you know, teach us the ways, I guess. Uh, uh, Nunuish says, child, my daddy was there. And Nunuish threw out a ski weed for you right there. Oh, well, that was me. Okay. oh that's you? <laughs> God dang it. Nah, yes, this, let me find out who the people are. They in here with me in the chat. It's ridiculous. Uh, shout out my school librarian and her creative black history, eighth grade trip to Freaknik in 96. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, <laughs> teachers and stuff, they knew we need a Freaknik 2.0. I'm sure these clips are from 96 and 98. Let's call it Freaknik, like that ain't freaky. Uh, Freaknik 2023 is just black Twitter after dark. That's a fact. And now we're calling it Freak Out. Let's go see some of these tweets, shall we? Um, the bad, Batters Mitch says, um, a fun thing had to end because niggas were scaring the hoes. Run it, Dylan. I hate niggas. I swear to God. I swear to God I hate niggas, bro. I swear to God I hate niggas, bro. I swear to God, nigga. I swear to God. Oh, oh I follow my kids. I hate niggas, bro. You niggas is not, bro. Oh, my God, bro. I'm going to talk too much, bro. I hate niggas, bro. I am he. He am I. I hate niggas. Niggas and flies. I do despise. Because niggas will fuck up everything. It gets on my damn nerves. They fucked up freak, nigga, as you just saw. Now, I ain't going to hold you. This is me. This is me. This is Tish Tosh underscore. This is me. 35 minutes into the Freak Dick documentary. Hit <laughs> it, Dylan. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing early. It's supposed to be titties. Where the fucking titties and the bitches? Hey, where the bitches at? It's supposed to be titties. Where the fucking titties and the bitches? Hey, <laughs> Yo, Uncle Ron was my favorite character on that show, man. Can we please do a moment of silence for the great show that was Snowfall? Did y'all watch Snowfall? Great show. Oh my God, it ended so rudely. It was not supposed to go there. Jerome was amazing. Have y'all ever heard Jerome talk in real life? No. He talks nothing like that. He British? Yes. Oh, he is? Yes. No shit. Yes. So's um, Frank, yes, Franklin. Franklin. Yes. Yeah. I'm talking about some... some well, Lori Hardy loved this show, too, and then went off. She stopped, too. Dang. <laughs> oh, that's a good point, Lori. <laughs> snowfall. What year? It's snowball, Snowfall. Somebody said Snowball. Got me real. Uh, snowfall. What year did that come out? Like, maybe three, four years ago? Four years ago. Yeah. Snowfall came out in 2013. 27? Dang. Dang. It had six seasons. Did it have six? Seems like it was so short. Um, at what's this, Marcy Singh 777? I asked my mom if she um, was in the Freaknik documentary, and she's gonna say, What year they pulled it from? <laughs> um, excuse me, <laughs> yo, that's a good question now. Because I'm telling you, somebody in the chat just said it was 96 or 98. Might have had you out there busting that thing open on a goddamn 96 Chevelle. You dig know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh, this is my one. This is my one. At like siestas. I like siestas too. I'm gonna take me a siesta on this plane ride. Jalen Rose won a car in a dice game. First of all, does everybody know who Jalen Rose is? Okay, Jalen Rose played in the NBA, if you don't know. Now he gets his hair Beijing and stuff on TV. Jalen Rose won a car in a dice game and drove it from Detroit to Freaknik the very next day. This is very black. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Cause, cause that boy knew. Like he told him right there, hey, put your car note up. He knew what he was doing for that car the moment he told him to put the car note up. Then to win, that ain't number God. That ain't number God to give you the transportation to go down to Freaknik. You clearly were supposed to go to Freaknik. Now, I have a challenge to you, Sir 50 Cent, Sir Curtis Jackson. If you don't have this scene in the next episode of BMF, I'm gonna be 58 hot. I'll tell you that right damn now. Uh, at English underscore Shamar, mothers, fathers, aunts and uncles taking victory laps in the living room. 
after not seeing themselves in the freak Nick doll. Can you imagine? I'm saying that. Can you imagine Mother Johnson? She Mother Johnson now. Back then, she was Aisha. In 96, she was just Aisha. AJ, what they called her. You did. Now she's Sister Johnson, okay, at First Ebenezer Baptist. And she cannot be up in there. They come to, Sister Johnson, we think we saw you busting it open on a caprice in 96. She's an icon. She is a legend. (laughs) And she is the moment. Yes, she will be. Thank you, (laughs) First Lady. Uh, Very black. Let's see. Went back with a 12-piece lemon pepper wet. That part. <laughs> that part. <laughs> that part. It's my sister Melba caught. Thank you, iHeartRadio. <laughs> uh, I've rolled up a little bit. T-R, uh, T- See, all these letters. That's UJ, too. T-R-I-J-W-S. Really can't have nice things. We can't. N-words can't, man. Because we just mess everything up. Bunch of laughing. Listen, I want to say I appreciate everybody in the chat. The producers over here saying that the chat is on fire today. I can only wow. think... <laughs> it's because of your boy. <laughs> Moving right along. Uh, at Carl at CC, when y'all put the daggone consonants behind the consonant, the X behind the T, it throws me off. So you see the name up there. Um, y'all lucky HBO didn't make this Freaknik documentary. Woo, child. Let me get that, Dylan. Because <laughs> you know what would have happened. Hmm? A bunch of niggas. As soon as it came on, during the credits right there, you just saw areolas. Boy, I used to love them nights. Gosh, what? You remember Dream On? Huh? Who remember Dream? Anybody remember Dream On? God, that's before y'all time right there. God, Dream On was great on HBO. That was a good Sex in the City used to have some little scenes too that had your boy. You know that. Oh, real sex. Taxi Cab Confessions. Yes. Oh, my little horny adolescent mind used to just do some damaging things. Nevertheless, I'm joking, Naya. I'm joking at all. She thought so, whatever. <laughs> uh, wait. Are we done? Damn near. Are we done already? That is insane. Well, first of all, I would like to say thank y'all for having me. I've enjoyed myself. Thank y'all very, very much. This was, I hope it was as fun for you all as it was for me. Hopefully, I'll be able to come back up here. In the meantime, I am doing a lot of things. Um, you can keep up with me on Instagram, b.tv. That's B-D-A-H-T. TV. You can follow me there. Um, I do have a podcast right here on Our Heart Radio. Um, it's on the Black... Black Effect Podcast Network, and it's called I Didn't Know, Maybe You Didn't Either. And it's basically, I give you three-minute black history facts that I didn't know. Maybe you didn't either. Make sure you check that out on the Black Effect Podcast Network or wherever you get your podcast. Speaking of the Black Effect Podcast Network, not sure if you know, but we're having a Black Effect Podcast Festival April 27th in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, I yeah. will be hosting. Y'all pulling up? We'll yeah. Nah, you coming too? We'll see. Nice. If they pay for it, you know, <laughs> if they pay, I'll be there. Nevertheless, man, it's going to be dope, man. If you're into podcasting, you're doing podcasts, definitely somewhere you should come and network. Me and Pretty V will be hosting. Got a bunch of our cousins that's on the Black Effect Podcast Network that will be in attendance. And me and my partner, Chris Paul, plays for the Golden State Warriors, doing an initiative for HBCUs. It is the CP3 Classic. Presented by BDOT, and it's a fusion of HBCU culture and AAU basketball taking place April 12th through 14th at Winston-Salem State University. And we're still looking for sponsors if anybody would like to donate to that. Can I say that, Jay? Thank you very much. Listen, I'm going to get up out of here, but this tweet, you know we end every black Twitter report with the tweet. And this one may trigger you a little bit. If you have kids or... Hell, if you've even been a kid of a black mama, today's tweet just might make you, mm, might trigger yourself. (laughs) Happy Easter, y'all.